O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations in all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I think all of us have had the, uh, well, all of us have had children, have had the experience of uh, putting marks on the door, uh, one of the doors, uh, entries as uh, the child grows to see how much they grow in each year. I don't know if people do that much anymore or not, but in my generation, that was a big deal. And uh, I'm thinking of this morning's gospel lesson as our measuring stick for our spiritual growth. Uh, those four things that are said. Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength? So, I'm going to ask at the end, how you measure up when you look at yourself spiritually. We know that the heart is the seat of our emotions, our feelings, both joy and sadness, regret. A lot of every feeling we can imagine comes from our heart. We have a lot of idioms in our language, you know, uh, you put your whole heart into a task that you're doing. Or you say, I don't have the heart for that. And, or you say to a loved one, I love you with all my heart. So we have a lot of heart idioms that reflect that uh, sense of the heart as the seat of our feelings. So Jesus was asking and is asking us, uh, do we love God with all our heart, first of all? I live at Penny Retirement Community, uh, Route 16 on the other side of the river, about halfway between Green Cove Springs and Stark. And... Uh, they have their uh, one of a number nationwide and worldwide, uh, a number of uh, 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 manufacturing uh, facilities for uh, an apparatus called uh, Worldwide mobility, or the, the nickname is PET, P-E-T. And it emerged out of uh, missionaries who would go to, uh, years ago, who would go to countries uh, in Africa, and Asia, and South America, places with a lot of poverty, and they would see disabled people particularly just crawling on the ground, pulling themselves along somehow as best they could. And over time, their, their, because their heart was so touched by this scene, uh, a number of them got together and came up with an idea for a, uh, an apparatus that doesn't require, it's like a bicycle except it doesn't require the use of your legs to pedal, it's, a, it's all hand operated. And it gave the disabled people, many of them at least, that they were seeing uh, in these foreign countries, uh, the uh, ability to, mo to move themselves around without crawling. And, but it emerged out of that sense of uh, their heart, sorry, forgot that was there, their heart being so touched by this scene of all of these people crawling around. And the way they express their love to God with their heart 
as a result of that was to create pet. Uh, the gospel also says to love the Lord your God with all your soul. I don't know how much thought or teaching you've heard over the years of uh, your Christian life, but uh, for me, the soul is primarily, not all exclusively, but primarily the way we connect with God. It's our connecting mechanism, so to speak. I grew up in a very strong Christian family, very uh, devoted. Uh, as I, I had a friend that used to joke uh, about his parents. He said, uh, yeah, uh, it was drugs that got me to church. And when everybody expresses shock about that, he said, yeah, my parents drug me to church, they drug me to Sunday school, they drug me to choir practice, they drug me to youth group, you know. Anyway, uh, and he, uh, but I, I was in a family like that. I mean, we participated in everything that happened at Linden Heights Methodist Church in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, so I, you know, had a really good foundation laid in my, my life. And I, all the way through high school, was very strong in the church. And then I went off to college and uh, became part of the Methodist uh, Student Fellowship and, uh, you know, continued to, you know, to participate in the prayer groups and the Bible studies to lead a few of them. But as I went on, even as I went through seminary, it was like so much of what I was getting was head knowledge and I still felt a, a hunger in my heart. And I knew there was something more that I hadn't received yet. And uh, I was in my first parish after ordination, still feeling that way. And uh, one Sunday, I locked my office door as I left the church and uh, took my day off on Monday, went back Tuesday morning. My office door was locked. But when I walked into my office, there was a book on my desk that I had not seen before I locked the office up Sunday and have no idea to this day how it got there. And uh, it was a book called Nine O'Clock in the Morning by Dennis Bennett, who was the kind of uh, co-founder of the charismatic movement in the Episcopal Church. And uh, I... Uh, read that book and it really moved me so much that I began to talk to people uh, about uh, what it meant uh, to be filled with the Holy Spirit and uh, found a small group of people in, I was in Allentown, Pennsylvania, so it was a small town, so it was a small group of people but who had experienced the fullness of the Spirit in their life. And they felt they could help me, uh, and they did, uh, to learn to love the Lord my God with all my heart uh, and with all my soul. And then the next thing Jesus says is, uh, love the Lord your God with all your mind. In 1937, I have to read this part, Charles Sheldon published a book titled In His Steps. Anybody familiar with that or read that book? Well, it was uh, much later in the 1990s that a youth minister in Holland, Michigan named Jane Tinklenburg uh, began 
uh, the trend of uh, introducing uh, or using uh, WWJD to train her youth group to ask the question, what would Jesus do? Uh, it became nationwide craze, bumper stickers and everything that crazes go with. It sort of drifted away, but uh, I still remember all those bumper stickers and people going around with armbands and uh, you know, asking WWJD, what would Jesus do? That was the uh, content of Sheldon's book. And it was basically you know, to stop before you do anything and ask yourself the question, if Jesus were in this situation, what would he do? Lastly, love the Lord your God with all your strength. I don't know how familiar you are with the collects uh, in the Book of Common Prayer, but the, third, the collect for the third Sunday in Lent tells us that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. No power in ourselves to help ourselves. And I've given so much thought to that over the years. And, uh, and felt like I didn't totally agree with that. And, but I, uh, then I, I don't know, it's a long story, but uh, I, I became a licensed mental health counselor here in the state of Florida. Uh, I started uh, working at a drug and alcohol treatment center and uh, and still preaching on Sundays and serving part-time but I just felt a calling to do that and uh, it was my first introduction to the 12 steps of AA and uh, it was uh, pretty amazing to me uh, that they talked about powerlessness and how we are powerless. So I've given a lot of thought to what it means that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. And, and I decided that the only important thing was to realize we may have no power, and, and that's true. We need to rely more on the, on the Lord probably than most of us do. But we can still exercise willpower, motivation, and determination in everything that we do, calling on the Spirit to guide and empower us, utilizing the spiritual resources of Bible study, prayer, and worship, practicing regular self-examination to discover the ways that we are habitually too self-reliant and not enough reliant on the Lord. So, again, those four things, uh, loving the Lord God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. For me, is a measuring stick. And I actually use that in my personal daily devotions that my wife and I do. And uh, I would encourage you to give some thought to doing the same thing, because it, it, it's not always the same. Sometimes I'm deficient in loving the Lord with, with my mind. But I'm, you know, excelling at loving him with all my heart. And other times it's different. So, you know, uh, it's important to have a measuring stick for how we gauge our spiritual growth and, and maturity, in my opinion. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this uh, time to be together. And Lord, I just pray that this measuring stick of loving you is helpful uh, and will, will be a guide as people go forth into their spiritual journey. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>